On July 24, 2019, the Department of Homeland Security and United States Citizenship and Immigration Services published the final rule amending the EB-5 Immigrant Investor Program. The rule comes into effect on November 21, 2019. The most significant changes relate to increased minimum investment amounts, the designation of targeted employment areas, or TEAs, the retention of priority dates for EB-5 petitioners, and procedures for the removal of conditions on permanent resident status. First, the minimum EB-5 investment amount will increase from $1 million to $1.8 million, while the investment amounts for projects within TEAs will increase from $500,000 to $900,000. This is the first increase since 1990, when the program began. The minimum investment amounts will also automatically adjust for inflation every five years, with the first adjustment taking place in 2024. Any I-526 petitions filed before the effective date of November 21, 2019 will be adjudicated under the current rules. So, for these petitions, the minimum investment amounts of $500,000 and $1 million will still apply. Those who want to take advantage of these lower investment amounts should begin the EB-5 investment process well before the November 21st deadline. Second, TEAs will be designated by DHS instead of at the state level. The definition of a rural TEA remains unchanged, but after the rule takes effect, specially designated high unemployment TEAs must fall outside of metropolitan statistical areas, or MSAs. TEAs continue to require an unemployment rate of at least 150% of the national average. Some areas will qualify as TEAs whether they fall within MSAs, cities or towns outside MSAs, or counties within MSAs but these designations will be based on federally published data. Under the current regulations, a specially designated TEA can be formed from the census tract in which the new commercial enterprise is primarily doing business combined with any number of contiguous census tracts. In the future, only the primary census tract and tracts directly adjacent to the primary tract may be used to form a TEA. In light of these changes, some areas that currently qualify as TEAs will no longer qualify. As a result, those participating in the EB-5 program must carefully research potential investment areas and projects. Third, some EB-5 petitioners will be able to retain the priority date of an EB-5 immigrant petition that has been approved and use it with any subsequent EB-5 immigration petition. For example, an applicant might need to file a new petition because DHS terminated the regional center associated with the original petition or because of material changes to aspects of the qualifying investment caused by changes in business conditions. Additionally, if an applicant files multiple petitions, he or she will be entitled to use the earliest qualifying priority date. However, a priority date can be used only once, so if an applicant uses a priority date to obtain conditional permanent resident status, that priority date will not be available for any subsequent petitions. EB-5 investors whose approval was revoked because of fraud or a willful misrepresentation of a material fact or because the approval was based on a material error, will not be eligible to retain their priority dates. Priority dates cannot be passed on to family members either. Being able to retain a priority date will be particularly useful when visa demand exceeds supply. Finally, the new rule clarifies the process that must be followed by certain derivative family members who are lawful residents but who are not included in the principal applicant's petition. The rule also introduces greater flexibility with regard to interview locations, allowing interviews to take place at the office adjudicating the I-829 petition, the investor's business, or the investor's residence. Currently, interviews generally take place at the investor's business. Additionally, the rule streamlines the process of collecting biometric data, simplifying the process for issuing green cards and reducing costs for applicants. Instead of having to report to a district office for green card processing, immigrant investors will obtain their new green cards after the approval of their I-829 petitions. DHS will capture biometric data when green card applicants visit application service centers for fingerprinting. Contact us today to take advantage of the current EB-5 program rules and to learn more about the implications of the new rules.